what is up youtube welcome back to another tutorial this one actually one that a lot of people i think have been waiting for especially people that have emailed me thank you guys for your patience so I'll, if you remember the last tutorial that i did with the tracers in after effects uh, i mentioned that i've been working on a plugin with a friend of mine uh, so that we can actually just avoid after effects altogether and you guys can use the same tracer in premiere using the essential graphics and that time is here that plugin is ready now keep in mind i know applaud applaud yes but keep in mind the plugin is very um uh, it takes a little bit of reworking and it takes a little bit of tweaking to actually get it to work and to sit on the footage correctly that you want it to highly recommend if you haven't seen my tutorial on that using after effects you'll have a lot more creative control and you'll have a lot more like uh control over the stroke as well as you'll start to notice so with this uh my buddy zach who is a great friend of mine who i went to art school with uh which you guys should check out his work he's an amazing motion designer very talented in what he does doing 3d and 2d work just like uh the motion design that i do but he does it on a whole different level um he was the first person that I reached out to. He was the first person that came to my mind in instance to like, is there a way to create a plugin? And so we had a conversation and he started tinkering and he came across this um, plugin that he uses called Hooker. Uh, it's an <laughs> interesting name, but it's a pretty cool plugin. It's a, it allows you to write a script onto the actual layer where you can tell it to read to another layer. So you're using path points to pretty much toggle to like uh, a null. And so what he basically did is rig this handy little, um, as, a, as the first test, I think he just basically laid out how the um, hooker uh, plugin would work. So using nulls that are parented to the shape point. So basically, if you see in here, if I I'll travel down, you're basically telling the the hooker um plugin you're telling it what point is to use at what vertices so it's pretty cool so he took it a step further and created this one where you have this piece right here that you could move to where now the shape point is actually triggered to this null and so what he did is if you open essential graphics up here hold on one second let's open essential graphics and so he laid out this one where he had the essential graphics, he had the position and angle for point one. So basically what you could do is you can revert the, and move the anchor. After doing some testing and bringing it into Premiere, using that single plugin, I was like, okay, dude, he pretty much did the whole thing for me. Um, it actually didn't work out that well. So I ended up having to come back into After Effects. I played around with the actual plugin a little bit myself and I ended up coming out with a different test. So what I actually did, is let's go into the third one here, is I broke apart the, the connection between the rotation of the start and stop point. So all it is is now hooker is just allowing you to move the point freely X and Y. And so that's another thing with Premiere. You're going to have to move up and then over. Um, you're not going to be able to grab this point and move it like I am freely like you can in After Effects. Um, when you move into Premiere, it's going to use this point system. So like if I move it across, then I got to move Y and then X. Uh, I won't be able to grab it and move it. So that's one thing that's going to be different when you move into Premiere. But what I did is instead leave the rotation for the apex so that we can not only one move it but we can rotate the bend so it's kind of similar to what i do in after effects when i come in and i actually like take out the curve of that thing and then i move my vertices and then i match it and then i just create like an imaginary curve that matches what the ball flight would have been right so that's the great thing so i kind of manipulated his version of it to a, a third version which only gives you the ability to uh, rotate the apex, which I feel like is easier control when you're in Premiere, especially if you're not familiar with animation and you're not familiar with After Effects. Um, this will be a great version to use in Premiere if you're trying to put tracers onto your footage. So that's kind of like the After Effects aspect of this. So then now let's move into Premiere and I can kind of show you guys an overview of how it works. And then you guys can download it and use it as you please. So let's do that. Okay, now that we have Premiere open, 
Uh, I have some footage here from a different uh, course, the course that I actually have coming up. I uh, played Rio Vista here, uh, kind of close to where I live. Not really, but about an hour away. So here's some footage that I'm actually going to use. So let's actually bring in the Mogurt file. So here, what you're going to download is you're going to have version 1 and version 2. Version 1 will give you rotation on all three vertices. Version 2 is only going to give you rotation on the apex, which is the second vertice. So in, and I'll show you what I mean, but when you download the zip, you're going to get both of these. So, so you can use whichever one you like. So for this instance, I'm going to bring both of them in just so you can see how to import it. I toggle to essential graphics, or if you come up to here window and you click on essential graphics, it'll pop up. And then I get to this little plus guy right here. And I'm going to actually go into where I'm working and navigate to wherever you downloaded it and you have to download one at a time unfortunately so do that same process again and let's bring in the second one and for this use case I'm actually gonna bring in the second one so because I know after doing the testing and stuff like that that the version that's gonna work for me is the version that actually has the the rotation on just the apex so I know this is the one that I'm gonna use and don't mind the setup all this is gonna look different I'll have the curve set up so it's easier to use straight off the bat so it doesn't come off like this so here with my footage I'm gonna actually decrease this sequence size to 1920 by 1080 and let's scale this to frame size I know I know because I've done so many of these and I see that little peak right here on the audio that's when I know my impact is on the club so I know that that's where I'm gonna be starting so let's take that let's cut all the rest of this out come back to the beginning of the timeline and I'm just showing you for the sake of showing you like fast and using this cut so what we're gonna have to do is bring this forward a little there's a reason why I'm doing that and obviously the ball impact is right there right and then it'll carry 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 and then like usually when I twirl that club down is when it's about to start coming down so let's say to right here is where my tracer would end right and then I can let the footage keep and then whatever you do with the rest of the cut that's how right? and so I'm not gonna keep this let's just say so now I bring the plug-in tracer down and you can see it'll generate and you'll see like it creates this real weird curve right <laughs> as it is right now but there's a reason why i did that so let's just go over what you can actually manipulate on the plugin itself so you can see right here in the top left corner when the essential graphics panel opens up you have the start position you can move wherever the start and stop is of your ball and the end position does the same thing um, in, in this instance I'm just gonna go through actually first so then you have the apex position which is gonna move the position of the middle part of your arc and then the scale so you can actually adjust the scale which will create a lower like less arc or more of an arc so this was the way I could actually like kind of give you the ability to like not have any curve at all and then manipulate your points and then bring in the curve again so then that way like it's your it's easier to do first of all i would highly recommend going in that path and then all these other attributes i kind of put in there just so you can customize it a little bit um you can increase the stroke uh, i don't know why it does that i didn't put us i didn't set a parameter for max so you can set it to however how you want but you could go like if you want to go thicky thick, you don't, you're not going to go not so thick. Um, you can also change the color of the stroke. Um, you can change whatever color you think is more applicable to your cut. And you can also mess with the opacity. So it doesn't have to be completely like a solid color line stroke. And you can adjust the end taper and the beginning taper. So if you don't want it to have like that little like kind of come to the point kind of look and you want it to just be a straight edge stroke there you go but then you can also taper it so it kind of looks like it's coming to a point and then you have the adjust for the end of the start one too so you have quite a bit of control which is pretty cool and to be able to do this in premiere i think was the whole goal so you can do it it does take a little time but I think all these tracers take time to do. So I think this is like, you're at like the 50 to 60% marker on the tracer. The animation's done for you, everything else. Now you just kind of have to set in to where your parameters are. So what I usually do is I'll go to the end point where the animations, like where the ball lands and I'll keep the header, like the playhead there. So then what I do is now kind of have to imagine, like watch the clip a couple of times so you know where your ball placement is. So I know like my ball was relatively like right 
here so that's where i know that'll start right and then i'm gonna move my apex position because that position for that one was actually over like i would say the height would be like right there and then it started to come around this way right so you can see it makes like a pretty cool curve when you start playing with it but unfortunately my ball didn't land here my ball landed like up over here so it was a good drive so it kind of like it had a little bit of a draw to it or a hook whichever one you want to call it and so we'll take the apex uh position again and then oh excuse me the end position and we'll move that back see so now this is where it starts to get a little finicky and you have to have a little bit of patience to do that too so now what i would do here is the ball ends up coming like out and then kind of curves back down so it won't actually em like fully emulate that curve so what you have to do is just kind of fake it right and then with that now i just bring the apex down a little and, and now i have what was kind of the path of my ball right so you can see like it takes off and comes around hooks back around and lands where it should land and see now you have your animated stroke and all you got to do is just move the position um again this isn't going to be a full solve every time you hit or i mean for every stroke like you're gonna have to play around with it like the speeding of things like see it doesn't fully match at the beginning because every ball is gonna have a different trajectory see like it doesn't it like it starts right there so what i would do is on the timeline is i would cut this bring this down and we're like just so i time wraps it up so that when it does hit it jumps out right so what i have to do is bring this guy back in a little and then bring this back in a little bit here and so that way when it hits the and we're still out a little bit and let's get that to match and so basically you would be like right around there right but you get the idea like for me the gopro because the ball gets so carried in the distance you can't really see it the tracer is just a guide to kind of get you to where the next part in your next shot is going to be and i think that does a pretty good job right so like i said play with it if you want it the stroke to be larger make the stroke larger um, if you want it to be thinner you can make it thinner and you can change the color so you have some creative control and now you have a tracer that you can actually just throw onto your um, footage and just manipulate some of the attributes of it so i hope this will be helpful i mean it was kind of a pain to build uh, um, and to test and to do that but you know the amount of time it takes to do it in after effects and this i think this will help a lot of those content creators that are doing golf content and editing it themselves i know it would have helped me especially if i'm not that familiar with animation so if you have any questions comment below i'm happy to answer it and i will keep reiterating off of this plugin so as new developments come or if new plugins come in that make it easier to control i will make a new iteration and share it to you guys from that but if you have questions feel free to reach out don't forget to download it you'll be able to get the zip that'll have both files um, and i'll clean them up so that when you actually apply to your footage it won't be in a weird shape it, it should be easy to manipulate so with that, happy editing, happy golfing. Hopefully this weather gets better and I can get out too. So, But with that, I hope this is helpful to you guys. And for those that are editing golf and playing golf and doing all this fun stuff like I'm doing, I hope this speeds up your process a little more. So with that, thank you guys.